The Great Fox Debate, Winners and Losers, the broadcast in 10 seconds. The last debate before the first ballots begin flying around the cold winter snows of Iowa is over. I'm Michael P. Borger bringing you the broadcast post-debate post-game show. The broadcast, originating from deep behind enemy lines, is brought to you by DailyBorg.com. Conservative politics for the thoughtful. Resistance is futile. You will be assimilated. So who were the winners and the losers in last night's debate, which may have been the most watched primary presidential debate in history? As many as 8 million people are anticipated to have tuned in. We'll find out when the broadcast continues in a moment. Hands can do incredible things. Now they can even help save a life with hands-only CPR. If you see an adult suddenly collapse, just call 911, then push hard and fast in the center of the chest until help arrives. Learn more at handsonlycpr.org. I didn't see you come in. Yeah, most people don't. Who are you? Oh, I'm depression, and I've come for you. <laughs> I'm not depressed. Oh, you're not. What about schizophrenia? No. Anxiety disorders? Uh-uh. Uh, eating or mood disorders? No and no. Oh, my mistake. It's next Tuesday that you lose your job and your boyfriend leaves you. <laughs> We're back. And yes, it's Friday. It's a couple of days later than our normal Wednesday taping schedule. But we couldn't very well do on Wednesday an analysis of a debate that wouldn't happen until Thursday. But no matter, we're here, and we're going to tell you who won and who lost last night. Winner, first of all, Speaker Newt Gingrich. During the first half of the debate, the lesser lights on the stage hurled everything they had at him except the kitchen sink, and that's only because Mrs. Bachman couldn't get it unbolted from the ladies' bathroom in time. The speaker stood up to the attacks, withering as they were, and came out of it clean. During the second half of the debate, as the attacks waned, the speaker was able to concentrate more on policy and substance, where he shines best, and did so without attacking any of the other Republicans on the stage, including his attackers. He looks bigger for it. His attackers look smaller. Mr. Gingrich is a winner. Michelle Bachman maybe the biggest loser. She led the attacks, most notably with a scurrilous charge that Newt Gingrich lobbied for Freddie Mac. Her proof? Well, Mr. Gingrich took a $1.6 million check from Freddie. Now, Gingrich readily acknowledges that to provide consulting services. Never once, he says, did he lobby for them. Now, Mrs. Bachman says the opposite and expects us to draw the inference that because Mr. Gingrich took the check, therefore he lobbied for them. There is no proof of this, and Mr. Gingrich is entitled to be believed until someone can prove otherwise. Mrs. Bachman did not prove otherwise. She simply attacked, and I watched her get smaller and smaller and smaller as the evening went on finally to the point of disappearing when she attacked Newt Gingrich over partial birth abortion. Newt Gingrich led the Congress to pass two partial birth abortion bans while he was, in the, while he was the Speaker of the House. Mrs. Bachman is simply not living in the same real world as the rest of us are, and she comes up a clear loser. Mitt Romney, a winner. Now that he's second in the polls, he's now no longer subject to the arrows and slings that come from the bottom feeders on the stage, trying to elevate themselves at his expense. Instead, Mr. Romney was free to focus on issues himself. 
He had some very good give and takes with Mr. Gingrich on substance, not personality. He was far less testy than in that $10,000 bet debate five days ago that got a lot more attention than it should have. Mr. Romney, when focused on issues, and Mr. Obama comes up a winner, and he was allowed to do those two things last night. Ron Paul came up a loser. In order to make headway with voters nationally and in Iowa, Paul needed to go out there and convince mainstream Republicans that he is something other than a 76-year-old libertarian crank. Unfortunately, that's all he looked like last night, except when he was looking like a weak, dovish isolationist. Paul fervently denied that Iran is seeking to build an atomic bomb. He denied reports from the IAEA that Iran may be within months of being able to build that bomb, which is maybe the one thing Michelle Bachman said last night that was actually correct. The fact of the matter is, Iran is building a bomb. They are a very real danger to America and to Israel. And for Ron Paul to dig a hole in the sand and promptly bury his head in it, as he did last night, shows he is simply not a man anyone should want within even a short drive of the White House, never mind living in it. More winners and losers when the broadcast continues in a moment. What if I didn't come from a famous family? What if I didn't have all their support? What if I didn't have all these opportunities? Believe me, it wouldn't be pretty. Pause before you play. When you drive for a living, you buckle up every time. Whether you drive one of these or one of these. Truckers know what I'm talking about because no matter how good a driver you are, trouble can still happen. That's when you want to keep your safety belt on to keep you steady, behind the wheel, in control, and looking out for everybody. Safety is a professional driver's responsibility. Remember, you're the one who drives for a living. A message from the U.S. Department of Transportation. Back to the winners and losers in last night's Fox News presidential debate in the fight for the Republican nomination. Up next, Texas Governor Rick Perry. Rick Perry is a winner. Why? Well, the bar was set pretty low. After ruining his campaign with several ruinous debate performances, the bar for Perry to clear to be a winner is simply to go out and not look like a moron. And that he did last night. In fact, he performed very, very well by any objective standards. Perhaps only Gingrich and Romney did better. Still, Perry could have done without the Tebow thing. Just be Rick, okay? You work out a lot better that way. Rick Santorum, loser. Santorum has only one objective in any debate, and that is to at least make it appear that he has any business being on a stage with a bunch of people seeking to, to relieve Barack Obama. He couldn't do it last night. He joined in Michelle Bachman in a series of ridiculous attacks on the speaker. Um, questioning his conservative credentials. Newt Gingrich balanced four budgets, something not even Ronald Reagan, the great conservative icon, did. Newt Gingrich reformed welfare, the only major reform of an entitlement since the phenomena began a hundred years ago. Newt Gingrich has a 90% lifetime ACU rating. You are not going to successfully paint this man as anything other than what he is, a solid intellectual conservative. That doesn't mean that every idea that comes out of his mind is going to be beloved by conservatives everywhere. Life just doesn't work that way. But for somehow for Santorum and the others, 
to try and paint Gingrich as something other than what he is, is simply smashing oneself against the rocks. And finally, John Huntsman. Huntsman was a winner in that he managed to do what Santorum couldn't, appear relevant. He was able to tout his record as a governor. His foreign policy expertise was also on display, um, citing examples of his time as ambassador to China. John Huntsman, though his fortunes are not likely to be improved by this debate, is a winner. Now, last night's debate was the fourth on Fox, each one drawing bigger and bigger audiences than the one that came before. The September debate on Fox drew over 7 million viewers. This one was expected to draw over 8 million. It is the last time the candidates will debate the Trump event having been, thank God, canceled before ballots actually begin to fly about the snowy states of Iowa and New Hampshire. There is only one more debate on Fox. That'll be before South Carolina on um, January 15th. That debate will be critical because it is the last chance that these candidates will have to debate before the largest available conservative audience, those who watch the Fox debates. Sadly, after this, Fox is no longer on the debate calendar, although it is certainly our hope that more debates will be added, perhaps in February, shortly before Super Tuesday, and hopefully debates will be added in April, right before the Northeast Mid-Atlantic Regional Primaries in Rhode Island, Connecticut, New York, Pennsylvania, and Delaware. We look forward to seeing the remaining candidates as the field begins to winnow debate before the largest available Republican audience, the audience of Fox News Channel. Soon the ballots will fly, wrapped in the flying remains of Christmas paper torn from gifts through the snows of Iowa. Soon we'll know who wins the first contest. Will Iowa crown a front runner? Or will Iowa make a fool of itself by, by voting for Ron Paul? We'll see how that turns out. But in the meantime, remember, the only sure thing about Iowa or New Hampshire is that there's no sure thing. You have been assimilated. Thank you.